Hello everybody, welcome to test for review in linear algebra. Uh, I changed the overlay a little bit, but uh, on the upper right hand corner, uh, there's still the list of the question and uh, I mean the list of the topics, and those are the topics that we have. Alright, let's start. Uh, first, we have inner product. Uh, so, inner product. Uh, we did a lot of this already, so we just go uh, straight to a problem. Uh, we look at number two right here. Uh, so vector v times vector w, uh, the inner product or the dot product. By the way, uh, I prefer using this angular bracket notation. So just write the problem again. That is v dot w. So the dot product, uh, the first time, the first, two times three, that is six. I just write down two times three, three times negative two, zero times one, and negative one times five. And that will be six, negative six, that cancel out zeros. And so this is just negative 5. Right. Uh, we use a lot of calculator in this uh, section, uh, in this test review. So that's why I put uh, the calculator permanently on that side. Right. Uh, so on this one, uh, we work for the matrix. Uh, there's no dot product here, but uh, we're going to use the list. First, I'm going to st store this v and w vector into a list so second curly bracket and enter the numbers 2 comma 3 comma 0 comma negative 1 close the curly bracket hit the store key the sto and then second number 1 so i start that into this one and do the same thing for list 2 3 comma Sorry. Open curly bracket three comma negative two comma one comma five close the curly bracket and then store into second two L two. Alright, now if we hit L one times L2, they just multiply point by point, so you see 6, negative 6, 0, and negative 5. Uh, we need to add all of this up. So to add all of that, here's second stat, go to math, option number 5, and now if we add this one times this 2, it's, it's going to be a, a dot product. All right, we're going to do use a lot of this uh, throughout the section, so I don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, for now, All right. Uh, so that is the inner product. Uh, the reason that the inner product uh, I study and very popular because we use the the magnitude is based on the dot product. So the magnitudes of the vector v is the dot product of v to itself, and then because the square root. So that is the magnitude or the length. Right. So uh, next we have the unit vector in the direction of a given vector. So the unit vector, let's say this is a vector v. Then the unit vector in the direction of v is given by v divided by the magnitudes of v. Uh, so the vector v is negative 32, 32, and negative 16. And then the magnitude. Uh, if it is given in that form, uh, this is in general, but we can also use uh, the square root of the component. So in this case, let's say v1 square, v2 square, and so on. So Bittal theorem. Uh, so in this case, we have negative 32 square 
32 square and negative 16 square so I just do the denominator square root of 32 square or negative 32 square that's the same thing 32 square and 16 square that is 48 and on the top you have negative 32 32 and negative 16 uh, so all of that divided by 48 negative 32 divided by 48 is negative 2 over 3 uh, 2 over 3 and negative 1 over 3 uh, I usually write a vector in this notation uh, to save space. Alright, uh, next. Uh, the distance between two vectors. Uh, distance between two vectors. So this is distance. Is given by just the length of u minus v. Uh, so first we take u minus v again vector can be written in different forms can be given in the vertical form of uh, a column vector or in this uh, line of point right so 25 16 and 21 minus negative 3 2 and 7 uh, so that is 28 16 and minus 2 is 14 21 minus 7 is 14 and then we we'll take the magnitude of this u minus v equal to square root of 28 square plus 14 square plus 14 square by the way, that 28 is 2 times 14. 2 times 14 square is 4 times 14 square. Uh, but just put everything in the calculator. 28 square plus 14 square plus 14 square. And if we take the square root of that, sorry. square root of that uh, it doesn't give us any nice answer anyway, so we have to do that by hand again 28 is 2 square times 14 square plus 14 square plus 14 square uh, so that would be 6 times 14 square And so we just have 14 uh, square root of 6. Right, but that is the distance between two vectors will be just the magnitudes of the difference of the two vectors. So that is the distance. Right. Of course, we could use the dot product, but uh, if we want the dot product, we can write as it's not very applicable, but we can still write a square root of u minus v dot with u minus v so in terms of dot product we can write like that but it's not as helpful that we just do it like this All right uh, next angle between two vectors uh, before we do one other thing let's just update the list uh, for inner product we have uh, 2 to 4 2 to 4 Now the angle between two vectors. Uh, the angle between two vectors. Uh, first of all, the dot product is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v and the cosine of the angle between two vectors. Sorry, we didn't see that. So it should be. 
so dot product equal to the magnitude the, the product of the magnitudes times uh, the cosine of the angle between them uh, with that uh, the cosine of the angle between them is equal to u dot v over u magnitude u and v right so we're going to do that first uh, u dot v this is u this is v given a different form so we have 2 1 2 dot with 1 2 3 uh, the bottom magnitude to square root of 2 square 1 square and 2 square the top 1 square 2 square and 3 square the dot product give us two two plus two plus six of course that ten but so we have the calculator so we just use that right at the bottom square root of two square and two square that eight and one is nine so square root of nine which is three and then square root of one square two square and three square one plus four plus nine is 14 so we have 10 3 square root of 14 and if we want the angle of theta uh, we just take the cosine inverse of that number uh, let's see I'll keep this in the degree mode And then find the cosine inverse of alpha equal y equal to that is a fraction 10 3 square root of 14 right and that 27 uh, one decimal places so of 27 degree That's what we have. Right, so that is the angle between two vectors. Right, next, uh, orthogonality. I will get back to number six uh, in a minute. First, two orthogonal. So, what does it mean when we say two vectors? Uh, we're going to write like this uh, vector u and v are orthogonal uh, if and only if the dot product is equal to zero so that is definition of uh, orthogonal Right. Uh, so we look at this. Uh, let's say this one is u1, u2, and u3. So first, u1 dot u2, 363, negative 303, so negative 9, plus 0. Plus 9, 0. So, yes, so they are all orthogonal. Uh, how about u1 and u3? 3, 6, 3, 3, negative 3, and 3. So, be 9 minus 18 plus 9, and that will be 0. Uh, U3 and U1 we already did that so U3 and U2 uh, 3 negative 3 and 3 negative 3 0 and 3 so negative 9 plus 0 plus 9 so that equal to 0 yes so uh, every pair of vectors are orthogonal 
so in that case yes it is an orthogonal set so the answer is uh, yes it is an orthogonal set right so that is orthogonal now we're going to do the projection Actually, it is orthogonal projection, so in a sense uh, related to orthogonal. Uh, we go back to number six, uh, orthogonal projection. Uh, so the notation, orthogonal projection, let's just say projection of a vector, let's say y onto u, so let's say y onto u is equal to the dot product of y with u over the dot product of u and itself times u right so y is 8 and negative 24 dot 8 and negative 4 8 and negative 4 a and negative 4 A and negative 4 uh, So will be We have the calculator So why don't we use it A times A uh, Plus 24 times 4 That's 96 uh, 160 bottom 64 and 16 64 16 that 80 8 negative 4 so that is 2 times 8 and negative 4 uh, so it'll be 16 and negative 8 16 and negative 8 so that is uh, projection in terms of the calculator though again we store y and u onto uh, the list so first hit the second open parentheses 8 comma negative 24 close that uh, store onto l1 and 8 and negative 4 store in l2 So we have y is L1 and u is L2. Right. So we just do that. This is the formula. So alpha y equal 2. We have a fraction. On the top is the dot product. Remember the dot product is just not the, the product. It's the product and then we have to add the sum of all of that. So second stat go to math. Option number 5. We have this one times this two at the bottom second stat option number five this two times this two so that is uh, that is the form of for dot product let me zoom a little bit bigger for a moment see if we can get even bigger than that no sorry that biggest we can get Right, and then, sorry, over here, uh, and then we multiplied L2. So, remember the dot product is sum of the product of two lists or two vectors, and then we have that. Hit enter, 16 and negative 8. All right. I didn't show you this on the, in class, because I, we need to know how to do that by hand first. The calculator is just to check our answer. Right. Uh, next, the 8, 9, and 10. Uh, this topic kind of similar. Uh, but, okay. So, take a look at first prompt. Uh, read the prompt. Uh, it's 
it is set uh, right x as the linear combination of u1, u2, and u3. Uh, first of all, very important that in this case we know that they are orthogonal. So or the vectors are orthogonal set. Orthogonal set meaning they are linearly independent. And if they are linearly independent, then those three vectors we span the whole R3 space. And because it spans the whole space R3, X is belong X belongs to that space. Which means X is a linear combination of those three. Uh, so because they are orthogonal set, so which means they are linearly independent. And we have three linearly independent vectors in R3, so they will be the basis for R3. So those are the basis for R3, which contain X. So which uh, X belongs to R3. Right, so in that case we can say uh, X is the linear combination of U1, U2, U3 in the form of X equal to a projection of X onto U1 plus projection of X onto U2 and perfection of x onto u3. If we're going to write uh, the vector, it's going to be x dot u1 over u1 dot u1 and u1 uh, plus x u2 over u2 dot u2 u2 plus x dot u3 u3 dot u3 u3 right when we write like that of course it's just the projection but all of this will give us the coefficient the coefficient that uh, vector x uh, the component of X on U1, U2, and U3. Right. Uh, so we're going to do each one of them. Uh, so first, uh, we're going to kind of save space here. Uh, so vector, uh, we have U1, U2, U3. So let's use uh, L1, L2, and L3 for those. Let's, okay. Negative 2, 0, and 1. I will store that into this one, L1, second one for L1, uh, 3, 5, 6, 3, 5, 6, store into L2, negative 2, 6, and negative 4. Star into L3 and then X. Uh, let's use L4 for X. Oops, I have to enter the numbers first uh, 4 and negative 14 and 33. Uh, store that into L4. Right now, we just do that dot product over dot product. alpha y equal to that fraction again I'm going to put that gangway on the phone as big as we can a fraction uh, need to sum first second stat go here option number five L4 which is X L1 which is U1 that and L1 L1 that is 5 so if you do that uh, that's going to be 5 
so we have 5 times u1 plus and then I just hit second enter that bring up the last entry and instead of L1 which I will just change to L2 and it's ready to go L2 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 so that is 2 times U3 U2 and then plus this is just a projection but uh, we use a calculator to save time uh, second or we just go up, hit enter, and copy and paste. Uh, replace L2 with L3. L3, L3. So this is minus 4 times U3. I just want to do one prompt by hand to confirm now calculation is actually that. Put that here. Alright, right, so let's just do this. So it will be x is 4, negative 14, 33, dot with u1, negative 2, 0, and 1, over negative 2, 0, and 1 negative 2, 0, and 1 so 8 plus 0 plus 33 so that is 41 uh, the bottom sorry 8 ok, the bottom uh, 2 square That is 4 and negative 2, so that is negative 8 plus 33, so it's 25. Uh, the bottom is uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, uh, plus 1 times 1 is 1. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. Yeah, so if we do that, it's going to give us 5. And we'll do the same thing for the others. Uh, we just use a calculator to save uh, space and time here. All right. Uh, next, uh, let W be the subspace spanned by U. So notice that the U, the vector U1, U2 are in R3. We only have two vectors. And uh, so it can cannot span R3. Likewise, the sum of the vector in W and a vector orthogonal to W. So, uh, try to sketch here. What we have is U2 and U1 and U2 are only two vectors. They're actually orthogonal vector. So we have two vectors. And then the vector Y is kind of not on that plane. Uh, we can only find the projection. This is the projection of Y onto W. Uh, let's call that Y hat. So this is Y hat. And then this will be Z. So we can say y equal to y hat plus z the y hat because it is a projection onto w so this y hat is in w and z is orthogonal to w so if we can write y is y hat plus z, we're done. So y hat is the projection of y onto w. Alright, now before we go 
any further notice, the better you want to use two, two and negative one, two and three, negative one and four. So that's negative two plus six minus four. So because you want to use two, uh, the dot product equal to one. I mean, dot product equal to zero. That gives us the orthogonal. We always have to do that first because if they are orthogonal, then we can use this property. Projection on on the vector is equal to uh, the reason we write x here uh, because in this case x equal to x hat actually. If we extend that a little bit further, we write x is this is actually x or x hat, it doesn't matter because which is the projection of vector x onto R3. R3 being spanned by the three vectors. So that's why we can write like this. So this is x or x hat, they are the same. Because if the vector on the same space, then projection will be just itself. Right. This is the this vector y is not on the space of U1 and U2. So that's why we have uh, the vector z uh, with that. Right. So first we find the y hat. So y hat is the projection of vector y onto w and w spanned by u1 and u2. I need to write that somewhere. So w equal to span u1 and u2 right uh, projection of y on w just projection of y onto u1 plus projection of y onto u2 right so which is y dot u1 over u1 dot u1 u1 plus y dot u2 over u2 dot u2 that give us the y hat Okay, sorry, forgot what U2. Right, let's do that. Y is 12, 14, and 25. U1, 2, 2, and negative 1. 2, 2, negative 1. 2, 2 negative 1, 2, and 2, and negative 1, plus twelve, fourteen, twenty-five. u2, negative 1, 3, and 4, negative 1, 3, and 4, negative 1, 3, and 4, negative 1, 3, and 4. Right. Uh, so the top here. Uh, 24, 28, minus 25. So there's 27 on the top. Uh, the bottom, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, 4, and 9. So 27 over 9. So this gives us 3 times 2, 2, and negative 1, plus negative 12, uh, 42, and 100 is 130. Uh, the bottom, 1 square, 3 square, and 4 square. I hope that's something nice and even. 26. What is 130 divided by 26? Oh good. Something nice and even. So 5 
negative one, two, and four. Uh, usually the combination of vectors like this, I just use a calculator. Uh, so three times the vector two, two, and negative one plus five times the vector negative one, three, and four. Close that. And we have 121 and 17. That is y hat. Uh, next we have, since y is equal to y hat plus z, so we can say z is equal to y minus y hat. Vector y is 12, 14, and 25 minus the y hat. This is y hat. So it is minus answer. There. So 11, negative 7, and 8. So I just write that here. Uh, z equal to y minus y hat. If we do that, uh, we have negative, I mean 11, negative 7, and 8. Uh, so in this case, we found two vectors. Uh, the vector y hat. This is y hat. Let's write that again. Uh, so we can write y equal to the y hat 1, 21, and 17 plus z this vector is in w this is orthogonal to w alright so the idea of a and I kind of the same thing, uh, but uh, because A will have three vectors independently, so that will uh, span R3, so X will be in R3, and because of that, the projection will be equal to itself. Uh, this, we only have two vectors, cannot span R3, so when we do the projection onto U1 and U2, the space of U1 and U2, uh, we just do the projection on each of them. We can only do that because they are orthogonal. If they are not orthogonal, we cannot do this. Right. Uh, find the closest point to y in the subspace w spanned by u1 and u2. Uh, first of all, we do the same thing. Uh, u1 and u2. The dot product, 1 times 2 is 2, 0, negative 2. So that is 0. Uh, so they are orthogonal because orthogonal this formula is valid and as you see the graph here uh, the y hat is this point actually is the closest of y the, the point that on w that is closest to y uh, so in this case it asks for the closest point to y in W will be just y hat, which is the projection of y onto W, because they are orthogonal, uh, so that can be a space. Uh, I mean, the basis for W. So we let W equal to span of u1 and u2. Right. Uh, so we just said projection of y onto u1 plus projection of y onto u2. This time we just use a calculator to save time and space. I should say space and time. Right. So y dot u1 u1 dot u1 u1 
plus y u2 u2 dot u2 u2 Uh, so let's say uh, u1 is l1, u2 is l2, and y is l3. Right. First, we enter the numbers u1, 1, comma 0, comma negative 1, and I will store into l1. Store into L2 and then Y is L3 uh, 15, 1, and 7. Store that into L3. All right, and then we'll just do this. Again, the dot product have to use the summation, uh, the, the sum of the product. All right, so alpha Y equal to will be second is that option number sorry not from there go to math option number five l three which is y l one which is u one second is that option number five l one l one L1 plus alpha y equal to so instead sum L3 L2 close sorry I should put that in the try to get it a little bit bigger second stat option number five I'm sorry second stat of the math option number five uh, L3 L2 where to go there right. L2 L2 and L2 All right 14 5 and 6 okay. Of course you can do this by hand to confirm our uh, calculation That's what we have on the orthogonal uh, projection. If the vectors are orthogonal, uh, we can write like that. If the vectors are not orthogonal, we cannot do that. All right, so that was A, 9, and 10 in the, under the projection. Uh, next. Uh, the Graham Smith process. Uh, we only do number 12 here because if we can do for three vectors, then definitely we can do for two vectors. Uh, so the Graham Smith process, uh, we're going to find in this case, uh, we have to read the question clearly. This is just orthogonal and not orthonormal. Uh, the nice thing about this is we see that uh, will be just. Um, can choose any vector uh, we can multiply the length so that the numbers is nice and even uh, so when we have three vectors so first thing it would just pick any vector to be v1 that's why customarily we just use x1 uh, so in this case x1 is just 0 1 negative 1 and 1 and again uh, we write a vector like this to save space so let's say it, if we are given two vector 
x1 and then x2 like that the gram smith process say that the first vector we take v1 exactly as x after that we will find the projection of x2 onto v1 so if we draw the diagonal this is the projection but furthermore what we actually find is going to be this vector so that is x2 minus projection of x2 onto v1 and we're going to let this be the vector v2 so that's exactly what we do so in that case we have v1 and v2 two orthogonal vectors the 3d kind of difficult uh, so we have x3 there for the projection and the difference so I'm talking about from here to here from here to here that is v3 right but first v2 is equal to x2 minus the projection of x2 onto v1 Uh, if we write down to x2 is 0, 1, negative 1, and 1 minus uh, projection, so it will be that product of x2 I'm just going to write that x2 wait, wait is that x2 so yes this is x2 so it should be this vector and not that vector sorry about that right so uh, let's just say this is equal to x2 minus x2 dot v1 over v1 dot v1 v1 right so x2 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, minus x2, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, dot v1, this is v1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1. Right. Uh, this one we just do it by hand. The next one we use the calculator. Right. The top, let's see. Uh, 1 times 0, 0. 1 times 1 is 1. So just we don't need the calculator, but just um, confirm. So be zero. So that will be zero plus one times one is one minus one times minus one. So plus one minus one times one is minus one minus one. So it is one. Uh, the bottom zero one. Plus one, plus one, so one third. Zero, one, negative one, one. Right, we have list of one, one, negative one, negative one. Subtract one third. Uh, it put a fraction, so alpha y equal to uh, one. 1 over 3 and then the list 0 comma 1 comma negative 1 
comma one. All right, we have that one two third negative two four a third negative four third. Of course, that is the correct answer. But if we want to, because we only need to find the orthogonal basis, not orthonormal, so we can extend that vector as long as we want to, as long as they are orthogonal, we're good. So why don't we multiply everything by 3 here? Uh, so in that case, we choose V2, uh, V equal to, multiply everything by 3 here, we have 3, 2, negative 2, and negative 4. So that is V2. Now we find V3. V3 is going to be X3 minus projection of X3 onto V1 and projection of X3 onto V2 because now we have V2 and V1 already. So I will store V1 0 comma 1 comma negative 1 and 1 store second 1 for L1 right uh, second parentheses now V2 3 2 negative 2 negative 4 close parentheses let's store that into L2 and then X3 well, let's use L3 for that we still need to store the values though 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 1 store into L3 and now we do this uh, if we write out, uh, would be x3 minus x3 dot v1 v1 dot v1 v1. If we write a plus, we should have the parentheses, but actually it will be minus, both minus. Just write that first x3 v2 v2 dot v2 v2 All right so we start with x3 which is l3 All right minus projection is alpha y equal to we have this dot product on the top second stat or here sum I should use Option number five X three V one L three L one and second stat option number five V one V one L one L one L one so we have that dot product dot product a vector uh, minus alpha y equal to second stat five l three l two and then second stat option number five l two l two and l Two. All right. Do all of that. That's what we get. And if we multiply this by uh, eleven, so we do not have the fraction. So we can choose that to be v three. Uh, once again, because they are not orthogonal, I mean, they are not orthonormal basis, so we don't have to have 
uh, the normal vector meaning we don't have to turn this into the unit vector so we have v3 uh, we multiply everything by 11 so we choose 14 2 9 and 7 that is v3 v2 and v1 so those three vectors are orthogonal to each other and this is the gram smith process again i didn't show you how to do this on the calculator because uh, i think in class we should learn how to do that by hand uh, first besides it is easier to do the problem on the calculator so if you miss anything you can always uh, go back uh, on the videos and look for that particular problem uh, so gram smith process that is number 12 Now we do QR factorization. Uh, QR factorization kind of the same thing. Uh, first, uh, we have to find the the uh, orthonormal basis. So it is not just orthogonal, meaning that we have to find the vectors and then the unit vectors. So for the Q. This is the auto, auto normal basis for the column space of A. And then the R is, since A is equal to QR, if Q is inverse, then that's easy. But vector Q is not an inver uh, is not a square matrix, so we cannot find inverse. All we can do is uh, it's going to be transpose. So R is equal to Q transpose A. That is how we find the vector R, where Q is uh, autonomous autonormal basis. That from the Gram-Smith process. So Graham Smith process again. Uh, so first uh, we find the Q so that there will be two parts of the problem. Uh, uh, step one is find Q uh, auto, auto normal basis. But first let's find the vector V. V1 is equal to X1. So this uh, the first column is x1, second column is x2. So x1 is equal to 6, negative 3, and 0. It's that easy. Uh, second, we find v2. v2 is equal to x2 minus projection of x2 onto v2 v2 is negative 6 18 and negative 6 minus the projection meaning that x2 negative 6 18 negative 6 dot with v2 I mean, projection onto V1. Sorry. 6, negative 3, 0. 6, negative 3, 0. do that by hand and then we check with the calculator All right negative 6 18 negative 6 subtract uh, negative 6 times 6 negative 36 uh, negative 54 
36 minus 54 I'm sorry negative 36 negative 36 negative 54 and that's it negative 90 bottom 6 square 3 square 45 6 3 negative 3 and 0 uh, so negative 6 18 and negative 6 plus 2 6 negative 3 and 0 so negative 6 plus 12 so it will be 6 18 minus 6 will be 12 nope negative 6 plus 0 so it's still negative 6 negative 6 so that's that I'll check with the calculator real quick uh, V1 or X1 is uh, 6 comma negative 3 comma 0 let's store that into L1 or X1 or V1 and then next negative 6 18 negative 6 let's store that into L2 or X2 is not V2 right now X2 L2 minus the projection second stat go to an option number five for some sum of L2 onto L1 and then sum L1 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 again right 6 12 negative 6 so we're good we are good so that is orthogonal basis that is V2 uh, what we need is not that we need the V not just the V and but uh, we need the unit vector so we're going to find the unit vector in the direction of V1 so we call that U1 uh, so it's going to be V1 over the magnitude of V1 all right magnitude 6 square minus 3 square 6 square plus 3 square that's 45 so that's square root of 45 uh, so we have 6 negative 3 and 0 square 45 which is 3 square root of 5 by the way So we have 2 square root of 5 minus 1 square root of 5 and then 0. So that is the vector u1. Uh, we would do the same thing to find u2. Uh, will be v2 over v1. I mean v2 magnitude. Right, v2 is 6, 12 and minus 6 square root of 6 square 36 and 12 square 144 and 6 square again what's that 
to 16 which is 6 square root of 6 ah sorry 6 square root of 6 uh, will give us 1 over square root of 6 2 over square root of 6 and minus 1 over square root of 6 So we're going to stack that uh, into Q. So the vector Q finally will be just uh, U1 and U2. Uh, so we're going to put that. Uh, this is the vector U1 2 square root of 5 negative 1 square root of 5 and 0 1 square root of 6 2 square root of 6 and negative 1 square root of 6 that is Q and then we find a vector R sorry the matrix R not the vector R so just a regular capital R notice uh, A equal to QR so R equal to Q transpose A. Unfortunately, with all the square root like that, we have to do it by hand. Transpose. This column becomes a row. 2 square root of 5, negative 1 square root of 5, 0. 1 square root of 6, 2 square root of 6 and negative 1 over square root of 6 that would turn that uh, sideways uh, the matrix A 6 negative 3 0 negative 6 18 and negative 6 row times column uh, which is ignore the square root of 5 6 times 2 at 12 square 5 plus 3 so we have 6 times 2 so 12 and 3 that's 15 uh, square root of 5 and that is negative 12 minus 18 so that's negative 30 square root of 5 6 times square root of 6 so that's 6 minus 6 that's 0 so R should be an upper triangular matrix so that is good there uh, negative 6 plus negative 6 plus 18 times 2 36 plus 6 so we have 36 over square root of 6 if not sure we can always take Q times R and we should have back the matrix A so that is the QR factorization that is number 13 Uh, list where solution find list where solution to consistent uh, non inconsistent problem by the way usually if we set up the system of equation like this this will be no solution uh, the best way the closest one to it is uh, we're going to multiply the transpose on both sides And then we get the vector x, but it's not going to be vector x, it is uh, the approximation, the least square solution, when we take the inverse of this, transpose a inverse a transpose b. 
and so that's what we do uh, so since we use the matrix A three times in the formula it would be wise if we store that into a matrix second matrix and uh, put that a little bit bigger uh, somewhere here let's bring that on the top A is three rows. I should hit over here. Three rows, two columns. One, two, three, four, five, nine. Right, so quick. Uh, the matrix A now is is that. It's good. Now. Second matrix. the second Great. second matrix a second matrix again go to math that transpose second matrix a close that transpose second matrix a a transpose of that inverse and then a transpose again times matrix b uh, we only use matrix b one time so i hit alpha zoom uh, so we have the three by one matrix three to one three two oops cannot hit enter there Sorry. Only use these arrows. Right, like that. Uh, convert hit math, change fraction, and that's what we have. So in this case, we just put that in the calculator. So x equal to, x hat equal to uh, we have 19 over 18, negative 7 over 18. So, just that. Uh, so that is the uh, least square solution. Uh, we can do the same thing uh, for number 15. Except this time it asks for the least square error. Right. Uh, the least square error. First of all, we have to find uh, the least square solution first. Uh, so from that, we have x hat is a transpose a inverse. Sorry, the inverse is outside. A transpose b. Again, yeah, that. Sorry, I should update the list. Now we go to list where that number 14 and 15. First, we do that, and after that, the list where error is going to be a x hat minus b. How close the ax close to b? This is the least square error. Why right, should we do the same thing? Uh, we have to store different matrix for A. Still three rows, still two columns. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. 3 and 2 right. quick uh, we did enter the formula earlier so I just go up copy and paste now instead of this vector 
how for zoom I'm going to enter a different matrix. Uh, 4, 2, 1 is that. 4, 2, and 1. We have that. If we want fraction, we have that. So uh, we have x hat equal to 1 third and 2 thirds. Of course, we cannot subtract x and b, that doesn't make sense. We can only do this. So we take a uh, first, we're going to find this. Uh, so first, let's find a x hat minus b. Since we have the matrix A in the calculator already, uh, second matrix, that the matrix A, this is going to be the matrix at hat. So second answer, that is the answer, which is x hat. And that minus the matrix B, alpha zoom, matrix B is uh, 4, 2, and 1, 4, 2, and 1. To that we have this. If we change the fraction, as is. Let's just write that in this form. Negative 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds, and 4 thirds. Uh, then we find the magnitude. Ax hat minus b equal to open parentheses negative 2 over 3 square plus uh, negative 2 over 3 plus 4 square 4 divided by 3 divided by 3 square we have 2.666 of course all we're missing is the square root of that second answer and that is 1.63 something which is this the magnitude of this better. Alright, so that is the list where 14 and 15. Uh, next, we do the best fit line. Uh, we can be 16 or 17. I just write out the formula first. Uh, the actual formula is pretty simple, uh, exactly like the list where solution. We have vector x. Uh, vector y um, we're trying to find the matrix b or the vector b such that x b hat equal to y uh, usually there will be no solution so the best fit solution or the least square solution is equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose why? I don't know why I put a hat here, but that's just why. Sorry, no hat there. The hat is actually is on better because that is the least square uh, solution uh, to our problem. So which give us uh, the B not and B one. So that give us a solution. Uh, we're not going to do 16 because uh, 17 is kind of like that, but it's a little more. Right, so we do uh, 17 is that. Right. So first, x and y. Uh, so to construct the matrix x, there are five of them. So one, two, three, four, five negative 5, negative 3, 4, 1, and negative 1. So that is matrix X. Uh, the vector Y 
is negative 10, negative 8, 9, 1, and negative 2. This one we need to find the sum of the square of the residuals. It's not just the least square solution. By the way, the least square solution uh, from the previous page with the hat equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y hat I mean y no no hat there the hat is not be better All right so we do that first and after that uh, what we actually find is sum of the square of the residual so will be just uh, this actual that solution minus the y but we find the sum of the square so it's going to be just that which is what we what the question asks us to find right so uh, let's store the matrix x five times two I roll one column so one negative five one and a negative five and a one and a negative three and a one and a four one and one one and negative one right so that is x we start matrix a right and then the x transpose x inverse times x we did that earlier so we just copy and paste this one uh it's not four two and one but it is that Five, negative ten, negative eight, nine, one, and negative two. All right, so we have something like that. If we have math, change fraction. All right, that. Don't worry about the answer on the back. I I change the list of the numbers, so it come out weird. So that is better, right? If we want, if we're afraid to lose it, we can store that to something. Let's store that to uh, this six. So L six. Right. I know why. This is the vector. This is the matrix and not the vector. So let's not store to this. Six. We can convert that to vector, but that's not a story. Don't need to worry about that. All right. Next, we find the x minus beta hat. X is just the mat matrix A times beta, which is the answer. So we just cannot do that. So x and beta hat minus y. enter that again negative 10 negative 8 9 1 negative 2 all right all that all right so we have all of that is this one here uh, so what we do is just the square of that uh, remember when we did say that, when we do the square, that it just the magnitude square is equal to the dot product of itself. Not sure I wrote that before. Yes, we square both sides, and that's exactly what we have. The magnitude is equal, magnitude square is equal to the vector dot itself. So, in terms of the vector, we can just say the vector transpose and v. So, all we have to do here is First, we check the answer, which is this long vector here. 
Uh, let's transpose that times the answer. All right, so we have just the dot product of this two vector, which is that number. notice that this is the sum of the square not the square root so just going to leave it like that all right uh, next is kind of least square problem but uh, we're going to use uh, the statistic uh, we use the calculator exclusively on the next one uh, so we have two lists of numbers uh, I think we did this in class Uh, we have two lists, two lists of numbers. So it's stat, and uh, now we have list. Uh, let's clear the list. So go to L1, hit clear, and enter. Do not hit delete. I have to hit clear. So clear, and uh, highlight L2, clear, and uh, L3, clear, and enter. I think we have L6, L4, okay. Let's clear that. All right, that's all we clear right L1 those number uh, 72 85 91 L2, 3, 7, 10, 10, A, 15, 4, 15, and 5. Right. So we store his stat, edit, store those X and Y into this one, X to this one. Uh, X to this one and uh, Y to L2. Yeah. All right. So, second mode, quick. And then go back to stat again. Go to calculate uh, linear regression. Uh, either number 4 or number 8. Uh, we usually give, in, give the answer in the form of. Uh, Better not plus better one x, so plus more like number eight. All right, so skip everything. We don't need any of that. Actually, let's store the answer into y one. So alpha trace. Let's store the answer in y one, and then calculate. All right. So we have the equation. So what was the question? Uh, what would be the predict number? Okay, mute it was 95 so the question answers uh, first we find y equal to beta not but beta 1 x and what happened if x equal to 90 what happened if x equal to 95 then what is y approximately equal to what so remember we have y1 equal to function in this line, so we don't have to copy All we need to do is, again, we get to y1, alpha, close. And now we just need to know what happened when x equal to 95, and that's all we do. It's 12.34 something. Uh, let's round that to 12. And the question, the next part is, uh, round the predict the number to the whole number. We did that. And is that is this reasonable? And we say yes because number ninety-five is somewhere, and this is not here, but it is within the domain of the problem. So in that case, why reasonable is about twelve. Right. Again, hit stat, edit, uh, store those numbers into list one, list two, second, quick, hit stat again. Go to calculate option number eight for the best fit line. 
if we want to store the actual somewhere just out for trace and that is y1 and yeah we store the answer into y1 and then as a function will be helpful later Next, uh, orthogonally, the orthogonal the matrix uh, given the orthogonal matrix P and the orthogonal matrix D. This is going to be a long problem. Uh, let me think a little. Right, best fit line. Uh, best fit line. We did 16, 17, and 18. Apparently, we don't need a lot of space for those problems. We actually need a lot more space for 19 and 20. Uh, the idea is about the same, uh, but I think I'm going to omit number 20 because that takes a lot more work. So let omit 20. We'll just do 19. All right. How do we do this? Uh, so let's say this is the matrix A. Right. Uh, we're going to write that as not only P D P inverse. This is this works for any this works for any uh, matrix. I mean any uh, invertible matrix uh, A. I should not say that any vector A that has uh, all of the eigen vectors, they're organizable. But what we actually write is not in this form, uh, but in the form of A equal to Q. still D and Q inverse but Q inverse is the same as the transpose so we do Q D Q transpose and how do we find a vector Q kind of like this however uh, we're not going to do that uh, what we do we just find the vector d first and then we take a very important properties from there and then we can construct q from there right so first find the eigen vectors and of course we cannot do that without first find the eigen values this is a long problem uh, so i'm going to admit 20 so we have more space eigen values is determinant of a minus lambda i lambda times identity equal to zero so we have determinant of matrix a Two, 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 and five minus lambda on the diagonal. Determinant of that is supposed to be equal to zero. So cross multiply two minus lambda, five minus lambda, minus four equal to zero. Two times two is four. Uh, multiply out ten minus two lambda, minus five lambda plus lambda square minus 4 equal to 0 uh, lambda square minus 7 lambda plus 6 equal to 0 so factor out uh, lambda minus 1 lambda minus 6 equal to 0 so we have lambda equal to 1 lambda equal to 6 those are the eigen values 
right and then we find the eigenvectors Uh, find eigenvectors which is to solve the equation a minus lambda times identity times vector v equal to a zero vector right, we have two eigenvalues uh, one is uh, lambda equal to one lambda one equal to one Uh, so I'm going to write the matrix A two 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 five uh, minus the diagonal matrix. I'm sorry, minus lambda times i, lambda is one, so minus one, minus one times v one v two equal to zero vector. Right. Uh, let's do the reduced row echelon form. Right. Uh, second matrix. Reduced row. Good math. Reduced row echelon form. Alpha zoom. Two rows. Three column. And that will be one and two. If it's two by two, we really don't need to do this. Two and and four. One, two, zero, zero. V one, V two, zero, zero. So V one plus two V two equal to zero. That's the first line, and then we have one here, so that's the pivot entry. We don't have the pivot on here, so in that case, we choose V2 to be free. So our solution, we can try V1 is negative 2 V2. So our solution V1 and V2 in the form of negative 2 V2, V2, uh, negative we fact out v2 negative 2 and 1 so that is the vector is negative 2 and 1 <coughs> that is v1 just put that. That is the vector V1. Right. Now we do the same thing for lambda equal to 6. Two, 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 five. And a six. V1, V2, 0, 0. Uh, reduce row echelon form. Second matrix. Alpha zoom. Minus 4. And 2 and 2 and minus 1 uh, so be 1 negative point five zero zero v1 v2 0 0 right so we can write uh, first v1 minus point five v2 is equal to 0 
and uh, only the pivot on the first column so v2 we choose to be ar arbitrary of say v2 3 right so the solution v1 v2 negative 0.5 v2 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 negative 0.5 and 1 so in that case uh, we can choose the vector to be negative 0.51 and 1 but uh, let's just multiply that by 2 so our vector is going to be negative 1 and 2 I don't know why I have the negative if we move that to the other side it should be positive sorry that I get better V2 right however if we construct a vector P then V2 V1 V2 is enough uh, but this time we use uh, we construct the vector of the orthogonal matrix uh, so in that case we have to find u1 uh, u1 is v1 over magnitude of v1 so we're going to write negative 2 and 1 over square root of 2 square plus 1 square so we have negative 2 square root of 5 and 1 over square root of 5 uh, u2 equal v2 over magnitude of v2 will be 1 and 2 over square root of 1 square plus 2 square so we have 1 over square root of 5 2 square root of 5 right, so that is u1 and u2 all we need to do to construct a vector q is equal to u1 and u2 right. then I go back to the previous question what is different here right notice that back here we did have q equal u1 to u2 but very important on here we have to do the gram smith process because when we do the gram smith process we're going to have the orthonormal basis so the idea here is the vector have to be orthogonal even have to be orthonormal to be the vector to put in the matrix q in here we did not do the gram smith process but the nice properties uh, is that if we have uh, the eigen vectors from different space this vector is from the space corresponding to this eigen values this vector is in different space corresponding to this uh, eigen values so because the vector come from different space they have to be orthogonal so that is the nice properties about the eigen Values and eigenvectors other than a lot more interesting properties but once again eigenvectors from different eigen space have to be orthogonal so in that case u1 and u2 guarantee to be orthogonal and then we turn that into the unit vector so we have orthonormal basis so we're going to put together u1 and I put that in the column And then U2. And then we put all together. A equal to Q. D. Q. Transpose. We could say inverse, but because Q is orthogonal, so just transpose. Right and then we can say q is this matrix a 
and then D is the matrix of the eigenvalues it is a diagonal matrix we start with 1 and then 6 and then just turn this sideways this column becomes a row and this column becomes a row I'll just confirm the answer let's store that into a matrix and that into a matrix All right by the way uh, this is Q D Q transpose I just store I don't want to mess with matrix A so let's use B and C we don't really B so store into matrix B All right 2 by 2 negative 2 over square root of 5 1 over square root of 5 1 over square root of 5 and then 2 over square root of 5 that is B uh, let's store the matrix and then we can use D why not 2 by 2 1 And then we have matrix B times the matrix D times the matrix B. But I have to do the transpose. All right, good. We'll go back to matrix A. Uh, so that is how we uh, orthogonally diagonalize the matrix. We're taking advantage of the properties that eigenvectors from different space, different spaces, are orthogonal. Uh, we zoom out, and so we can see the whole problem. So, find eigenvectors, eigenvectors. They automatically orthogonal because they form different space. But we need to turn to the unit vector because Q is the matrix of orthonormal bases. So we have that, and then we diagonalize it. Right, let me update the list so that again we omit number 20, so we only do 19. Let's put that in the note. Omit number 20. Boom. And put that in red. Right. So that right. As you see, only two by two, and that take the whole page. Uh, so that's why we admit number twenty. Uh, quadratic forms. Uh, quadratic form when we have something like this then we just do x transpose ax so that will almost too easy. Um, by the way let's just zoom it back in and that took too small. Alright better. Now x transpose ax uh, that is uh, easy. So, number 21, uh, of course, x transpose ax, and it's almost too easy. Uh, we just say the vector x, if we turn that around, the column becomes the row. So, be just x1 
x2 x3 times the matrix point is that this one we cannot do it using the calculator because there's the variable in it 9 3 0 3 1 5 0 5 and negative 2 all right and then times x1 x2 x3 all right I just want to buy this two first we have x1 x2 and x3 that gives us the column okay 9 times x1 plus 3 times x2 and that's it 3 times x1 plus x2 plus 5 x3 no x1 5 x2 minus 2 x3 I want to buy out row times column so we have 9 x1 square plus 3 x1 x2 so the first with the first second with the second so 3 x1 x2 x2 square 5 x3 x2 or x2 x3 now x3 times that will be 5 x2 x3 minus 2 x3 square All right uh, the matrix A is symmetric by the way as you see uh, A equal to A transpose just write a little note here uh, note that A is symmetric uh, because A transpose equal to A. I uh, can verify that easily. Now combine like terms 9x1 square. That gives us 6x1, x2, x2 square. 5 and 5 give us 10 x2 x3 minus 2 x3 square right so that's it right uh, next how make a change variable uh, into the form with no cross product term right so to do this uh, we're going to write the Q in term of uh, x transpose a x and then from a we decompose into q d q transpose and uh, the rest which will be similar uh, we're not going to do that uh, for the eigen vectors but now we just try to eliminate the terms uh, so first uh, we're going to turn that into quadratic form Right, so we have four. I don't know why I do that in red. Uh, four x one square plus seven x two square. Uh, we're going to split that into two x one x two and then two x two x one. So pretty much we can put that in the matrix of x one x two times. 4 and 7, those are the square, will be on the diagonal. And 2 and 2 will split equally. There. And then x1, x2. So in the vector form, for the quadratic form, those two are equivalent. So that is x transpose a x. Go to that. This is the matrix A. Right. Uh, not going to do that. Not going to do the complete problem. But we'll turn A into Q. The Q transpose. 
and we're going to put back into this form uh, so in that case we will have let's call that x transpose q dq transpose x and we're going to call this y transpose and then y so in that case we can write that as y transpose y so in that case you see that we just have that the matrix d which is the diagonal matrix by the way i'm not going to find the the qd and q transpose that pretty much like what we have here what we'll just do quickly is just find the eigenvalues uh, and let you find the eigenvectors so we just do the first step here uh, find the eigenvalues Uh, which involves solving the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. That is the characteristic equation. Uh, so determinant of four two two seven. Let's subtract lambda on the diagonal equal to zero. So 4 minus lambda, 7 minus lambda, minus 4, 2 times 2, equal to 0. Uh, 28 minus 4 minus 7, that minus 11. Lambda plus lambda square minus 4 equal to 0. So lambda square minus 11 lambda plus 24 equal to 0. That is 3 and 8. Uh, so lambda minus 3 lambda minus 8 equal to 0 so lambda equal to 3 and lambda equal to 8 Again, I'll, I'll let you find the eigenvectors. When you find the matrix, when you find the eigenvectors, uh, we have V1, turn that into U1. We have V2, turn that into U2. The vector matrix Q will be U1 and U2. And after that, uh, y equal to will be here. Q transpose x. not going to do you're going to finish this part and uh, get y equal to something x something y that number point of five vector q you're going to do that but once we turn everything into that form i know is that now we go back to uh, y transpose dy now let's continue from there if we have y transpose dy y1 y2 that's y transpose by the way 3008 sorry y1 y2 if we multiply it out we have those two first y1 y2 times 3y1 a y2 which is equal to 3y1 square plus a y1 y2 square as you see when we do this we no longer have the gross product term because we turn this matrix uh, into the diagonal matrix in that case we eliminate the gross product term 
uh, we still haven't found a better queue yet uh, I've let you do that part uh, finish that part All right. of course we just find eigen vectors turn that to unit vectors and then put in to find the matrix Q and after that we take y equal to Q transpose x and that's all we have So this is that much I want to cover uh, for the test for review. Uh, it shouldn't take that much time, uh, but I just want to uh, use the calculator on quite a few of those problems that I did not show in class. Uh, so that's why it is about two hours long. But uh, I hope you, I hope this helped you to prepare for test four. Thank you for watching.